for this page of the revision guide, you just basically need to know how to use two formulas, which is this one and this one. So if we zoom in for this one, work done equals the force applied times the distance moved in direction of force. Basically, work done equals force times distance. And knowing how this then fits into here, where power equals work done over time. But basically, just know these two formulas, W equals F times D and P equals W over T. So we'll look at the first question to see how they're being used. Uh, Mike does weight training. He lifts the weights from the floor to above his head. So look at the diagram. Mike does work when he lifts the weights. He pushes up with a force of 500N. He lifts the weights to M. Calculate the work done on the weights. So I'll select the correct equation from the list on page 2. So for two marks, uh, one mark for the answer and one mark for the working out. Basically, if they're talking about this work done, you're given the distance and you're given the force, then surely they must be asking you about this formula here. So just plug in the numbers into the formula to get the answer, because we're given force and we're given distance. So therefore, the answer to this question is 500 times 2 to give you 1,000 joules. But you got to put down the 500 times 2 here to show you're working to get the one mark and then the answer in here to get the second mark. And the next question reads, the mountain climber does work when climbing the mountain. The mountain climber does 4,000 joules of work in 100 seconds. Calculate the power of the mountain climber. Right, so same style, two marks, one for the answer, one for the working out. But this time they're talking about the power. And we know when talking about the power, they're talking about this equation here, where power equals work done over time. We've been told what the work done is, and we've been told what the time is. So basically, plug in the numbers into the formula to give you the answer. So what you should get is 4,000 divided by 100, which gives you... 40 watts. So the next question, zooming in, reads, look at the information in the diagram. The van moves a distance of 125 meters. The force on the van is 400 newtons. Calculate the work done on the van. Same style, two marks, one mark for the answer, one mark for the working out. So you're given the force and you're given the distance, but you're being asked to work out the work done. So the formula that you should use to answer this question is this one here, where work done equals force times distance. So your answer should be 400 times 125 to give you the answer here that is 400 times 125 to give you 50,000 joules of work done two marks just like that you should start to see a repeat pattern where they're giving you the two marks one for working one for answer and you're only going to be required to do basic calculations for the formulas so don't be intimidated by numbers if you're not good at math because it's actually very simple to get these marks so the car breaks, look at the diagram. Braking force equals 2,000 newtons, distance is four meters. Don't worry about the direction, and all you gotta do is just plug in the numbers into the formula. So the braking force is 2,000 N, the braking distance is four M. Calculate the work done by the brakes on the car. So we know work done equals force times distance, so what you should get is 2,000 times four to give you 8,000 joules, two marks. So this next question is slightly different to what we've seen so far. Uh, Penny drives her car up a hill, look at the diagram. Her car climbs 4 meters for every 100 meters that it moves along the road. The car weighs 7,000 N. Show that the work done is 28,000 joules and you can use the equations on page 2 to help you. So for one mark this time, you're being asked to prove why is it 28,000 joules. So you're being told the answer this time. So the one mark is basically to show you're working and they've removed the other mark for the answer because they've actually given it to you. So basically, how did you get to 28,000? You just simply show them that work done equals force times distance work done equals force times distance then you write the force is 7,000 times the distance which is 4 to give you 28,000 it takes 8 seconds to do 28,000 joules of work calculate the power of the engine needs to climb the hill the equation on page 2 may help you ok 2 marks 1 for answer 1 for working but this time we're using the different formula this one power equals work done over time we know that because it says calculate the power the engine needs to climb the hill so you know read the question carefully you should show 28,000 divided by 8 over here to give you the answer. You should 28,000 divided by 8 to give you 3,500 watts. For this page of the revision guide, you just basically need to understand this higher tier material here about the uh, kinetic energy equals half mv squared and testing you the understanding behind this formula. So as we go through the questions, you'll understand more about it. And it seems to asking about these four bullet points here, this higher tier section about fuel consumption and why they differ and a little bit about here as well so basically all of the fuel consumption and this kinetic energy bit here so let's look at the first question where it reads so look at the table okay don't really need to explain the relationship between speed and braking distance so for two marks your answer should talk about kinetic energy speed and braking distance 
Well, the model answer for this type of question, and it, there's a possibility that it will repeat itself because it summarizes everything you need to know about the half mv squared equaling the kinetic energy. And in summary, basically, uh, when braking, the kinetic energy is being absorbed by the brakes, first point. And the second point that you need to mention, which links these two, is that when speed doubles, braking distance quadruples. And that's from the half mv squared bit here. So basically, when the speed doubles, which is the velocity, the braking distance will get squared. It's the idea that you understand that when speed doubles, that the braking distance more than doubles, but more accurately, it quadruples. So understanding that kinetic energy gets absorbed when braking, and that when speed doubles, braking distance quadruples. And that will be enough to get you the two marks. So this next question is about fuel consumption, and it reads, uh, look at the information on the fuel consumption of some vehicles. So we got a car, a minibus, a motorbike, and a van, and they're accompanying uh, fuel consumption in kilometers per liter. So as you can see, cars about 15, minibus 10, motorbike 25, and van 8. So the question for one mark says, the car uses 30 liters of fuel. So look at the table. So just how many kilometers it traveled using 30 liters of fuel. So the idea that you notice a car, and you know it uses 30 liters, but for each liter it travels 15 kilometers. So they're basically asking you to do a simple calculation of 30 times 15 to give you 450. Don't forget the units, which is 450 kilometers. Then the next question, uh, so the fuel consumption for the van is not always the same. It can be anything from 5 to 12 kilometers per liter. So just why the fuel consumption is not always the same. So for two marks, you got to state two points. And basically, they're asking you to recall the higher tier material, where basically it says car fuel consumption depends on the energy required to increase the kinetic energy, energy required to work against friction, driving style and speed, road conditions. So any two out of these four will get you the two marks. Totaling of three, just like that. So let's zoom into the next question. So we use fossil fuels to power our cars. These fuels produce fumes. Bill's car has a fuel consumption of 8 kilometers per liter. Bill needs to travel 72 kilometers. So how much fuel will the car use to travel 72 kilometers? So for one mark, choose from the list. It's pretty simple. If he has to travel 72 kilometers and the fuel consumption is 8 kilometers per liter, it's basically 72 divided by 8 to give you 9 liters. And that's the answer for one mark. The next question is, Bill needs a new car. He thinks about buying an electrically powered car. So electric cars do not fill up with fossil fuels. How do electric cars renew their supply of energy? So for one mark, they basically ask you to recall this bit down here where uh, it says cars powered by fossil fuels pollute the environment at the point of use. We don't need to mention that. Battery powered cars don't do this, but recharging the battery uses electricity that is generated in power stations. So basically they recharge their batteries using electricity that is generated in power stations. And that's enough. Get you the one mark. And finally, the electric cars do not produce waste gases when they are driven. The use of electric cars can still pollute the air, so just how? So it's the idea that basically electrically powered cars don't pollute immediately, but they still pollute nonetheless. Like they don't pollute at the point of use, as mentioned here, but they do pollute later on because the power stations cause the pollution. And because the electricity is being produced by the power station, the power station needs to burn the coal to generate the electricity you know, stuff like that. Or the idea that um, in the long term, when the car is finished being used, you have to dispose of the car. The scrappage, you know, will add to the landfill, which is kind of polluting the environment as well. So it's just things like that. I mean, there's no right or wrong answer as long as you can justify it. We would advise that you just stick to the revision guide answer and the idea that you got to scrap the car at the end to, you know, keep the revision simple. So let's zoom in to look at the next question. Uh, look at the information on fuel consumption for different vehicles. As shown, the car has an average fuel consumption of 11 kilometers per liter, and the van has 7. So the car has an average fuel consumption of 11 kilometers per liter. The car uses 6 liters of fuel. So how far will the car travel? So basically, it's a simple calculation where if the fuel consumption in kilometers per liter is 11 for the car and it uses 6 liters, it's basically 11 times 6, which gives you 66 kilometers for the one mark. So the van has an average fuel consumption of 7 km per liter. Uh, most drivers rarely get 7 km per liter when they drive the van. So, so just two reasons why. So two marks, one mark for each reason listed. So they're basically asking you to recall two of these points here. Energy required to increase the kinetic energy or energy required to work against friction, driving stall and speed, road conditions. Memorize these points. They're um, kind of common repeat questions. And that's it for three marks. So this next question is testing your understanding about the formula kinetic energy equals half mv squared and the question uh, reads look at the two statements about car crashes so Mike's statement is if you double the speed the crash is only twice as bad Sue's statement is if you double the speed the crash is four times worse apparently Sue is correct so you need to explain why and in your answer use ideas about energy so three marks you gotta state like three points 
first point is um, you should probably write down the formula kinetic energy equals half mv squared then the second point you would write is the kinetic energy is absorbed when breaking and when speed doubles the breaking distance quadruples because of the v squared in the half mv squared formula so these three points will get you to three marks okay so let's begin with the next question where it reads look at the graph it shows how the driving force produced by penny's car engine increases with speed so here you're given the graph where driving force versus speed and you can see that the graph is gradually getting steeper it's not a straight line graph from the beginning so the fuel consumption at 70 miles per hour is much larger than penny expected so you're being asked to use the graph to explain why for the one mark so basically the first thing you can say is the driving force is not proportional to speed so therefore at 70 miles per hour the driving force expected at 70 miles per hour is much larger than penny expected and that's enough to get you the one mark so apart from speed write down the other factor that affects fuel consumption in penny's car so for one mark you're being asked to recall one of the four points here i won't go through them because uh, you know what they are already uh, penny is concerned about polluting the environment so she is thinking of buying an electrically powered car the salesman says that it does not cause pollution is he really correct well, for two marks, you got to state two things, and we know it doesn't pollute at the point of use. However, the power stations where the batteries are getting recharged do cause pollution, so that's one mark. And the second mark is when you dispose of the vehicle, that also causes pollution. So, just like that, four marks. The next question is a simple one mark one. So, this question is about the engine sizes of cars and how much pollution they make. So, look at the table. So, you got a list of cars A to F their engine sizes, and their associated amount of carbon dioxide emissions given off. So there's a pattern between the size of engine and the carbon dioxide emissions. What is the pattern? So for one mark, you know, well, you can basically see it. Increasing engine sizes will cause an increase in carbon dioxide emissions given off. I mean, you can see it. Look, bigger engine, more CO2 given off. And then as the engine gets smaller, less CO2 is given off. So you just basically explain what you see from the table and it's not a difficult question so for the one marks you don't like try too hard to answer the question just describe what you see and basically you just have to mention one point if especially if it's just a one mark question if it's two marks then you state two different points so this next question is basically testing your ability to read off a graph which i'm sure you all know how to do anyway but we'll go through it so many cars have an engine size of 2000 cubic centimeters what is the carbon dioxide emission for an engine this size Right, so basically you read off the graph where it says 3,000, then you read along the y-axis, which gives tells you what the CO2 emissions are, and we can see that it's 250. Now, the thing that you have to pay attention to is what each little square represents. Um, you have to count it properly, so make sure that when reading off graphs, you pay extra attention, because a lot of times, because the squares are so close together, people kind of misread it, so pay extra attention when reading off graphs. So for this question, the answer is 250. And the second part of the question, many cars have smaller engines. Extend the graph to find the carbon dioxide emission from a 600 cubic centimeter engine. So basically, you got to extend the graph. Don't worry that you extend it differently to any other student taking the exam at the time. They'll give you a range of answers that you can give it to. So for me, if I drew it about here and about 600 cubic centimeters, the answer for me would be 60. But I'm sure they'll give you a plus or minus range to cover this entire area here. But the point is, try to be as smooth as possible to continue the gradual smoothness of the graph. Like, don't go off like this all of a sudden. Make sure it follows the general direction. So, 60 here, 250 here, and two marks just like that. And the final question, testing your knowledge on the fuel consumption page of the revision guide, is this one here, where it reads, different cars have different fuel consumptions. Look at what four drivers say about their cars. So, Fiona says, my car does 12 kilometers per liter. Greg goes, my car has the best fuel consumption. It does 8 kilometers per liter. Helen says, my car does 13 kilometers per liter. And Ivor goes, my car does 6 kilometers per liter. So basically, Fiona does 12, Greg does 8, Helen does 13, and Ivor does 6. So we're told that Greg is wrong. So whose car has the best fuel consumption and explain why for the one mark? So obviously, we know the best fuel consumption is Helen. And the reason is because her car can travel the furthest distance per liter. She can travel 13 kilometers per liter. So the second part of the question, switching on air conditioning increases the amount of fuel a car uses. Um, you're being asked to write down one of the factors that increases the amount of fuel a car uses. So write the factor and then explain why this increases the amount of fuel used. So basically, this is a fuel consumption question, a higher tier part. And they're basically asking you to list any one of these four and justify it. So if that's the case, I would probably say driving style and speed. The best way to explain this, why does this increase the amount of fuel used? Because if the driver 
is always pressing on the gas pedal, more gas is being used or more petrol is being consumed unnecessarily. You know, so that there's basically more petrol is being consumed. As long as you list that point from the revision guide and just come up with any old reason, they'll give you the mark.